This first guy will make your jaw drop. I've been covering a ton of oddballs who featured on the show over the last couple of weeks, but the ones I'll be talking about today were ready to go to any length to get what they want. Some of them are so crazy that it seems kind of unreal. Let's start with this weirdo who was caught in the Fairfax County Sting back in the day when the team was just setting up their base, which means the cops were still not part of the ongoing investigation, and the burden of dealing with the bunch of losers was entirely on the production house. And let me tell you, it's not an easy job to pin down mudheads in the absence of law enforcement. However, the production team was determined, and this determination was met with an equal and opposite force named John Michael Kennelly. Of course, every man who is caught on the show is a specimen of his own kind, but this one was different. Kenley left quite the impression on everybody with his odd behavior and even weirder activities. A lot of them came and a lot more left, but Kennelly is someone who will forever be remembered for doing the weirdest thing to have ever been recorded in the history of the show. Although Kennelly went by the screen name Special Guy 29, there was nothing really special about him. After showing hell of a lot of interest in the boy he had gotten in touch with online, Kennelly decided to take the next step. He expressed his deep desire to become a boyfriend and explicitly talked about the things he would like to do with the boy. Kennelly then continued the conversation and claimed that he was a 29-year-old prep school teacher who taught kids from the 11th grade. It was not until much later that Kennelly's real age surfaced. This jerk was actually 43 at the time of the stage and wasn't even employed. It's pretty clear that this moron was ready to lie at the blink of an eye to get what he wanted. But since he came across as a pretty no-nonsense kind of guy, the team decided to play along with his stupidity. However, nobody expected him to take a passing joke seriously. Just how far would this man go to try and date a boy who he shouldn't even be talking to? Trust me, the entire team's jaws hit the floor when they saw this. Ooh la la, that's more like a treat to sore eyes. Jokes aside, I think of all the weirdos to have ever been featured on the show, none of them were as devoted as this guy. I mean, this guy was ready to go to any lengths to please his partner. People talk about shedding the ego before you start a relationship, but this one decided to shed his clothes. Now, before you start laughing, let me remind you, this must be quite a significant move from his side. Why else would he do it otherwise? And to think of it, Kenley had barely spoken to the boy for about an hour, and he already decided to make him his boyfriend. This guy is gold man. Just look at the level of commitment. It's just oozing out of his bare skin and dumb face. And damn, does this guy have any restraint at all? At the time, the Watchdog organization did not have much experience, as it was only their second sting, and they had no idea how things would play out in real life. Had they known, I don't think they would have asked the loser to strip before entering the house. Yeah, they actually asked him to. In fact, everyone on board thought Kennelly was joking when he mentioned that he did not wear inners in order for him to strip. Come Coming from a 43-year-old, this statement is screaming out that this moron had some major malfunction inside his head. As Kennelly arrived on the scene, he was seen carrying a 12-pack along with him. The man then proceeds to enter the house via the garage, and this is where he did something you wouldn't believe. At one point, the decoy said something about, you know, what would be really hot. Kennelly was finally down to wearing nothing but socks. He then walks right in, and nope, he did not even need any kind of invitation before he barged right in and took his place on the stool. I have no idea what was running through his head, but those few milliseconds of silence that passed between Chris and Kennelly in the room alone is epic. And no matter how many times I replay this next clip, it never fails to get me. Could you explain yourself? I'm sorry. Go ahead and cover up. Certainly. I'm sorry. What's going on here? This must be one of the most unforgettable what's going on here moments from the show. Chris could barely look at him with a straight face. I'm surprised how he maintained his composure because this was a true test of self-control. For this loser who came to meet a boy and have some fun, things ended up being disgustingly embarrassing. I mean, if getting caught red-handed was not enough, imagine what it's like to get caught like this. While Chris started firing questions like he normally would, Kennelly was still trying to come to terms with what had just happened. While the only few words that left his his mouth were, I'm sorry, Kennelly's mind was rushing through all the possibilities of who the towering man was. Was it the boy's father? Or maybe this was the boy himself? I mean, when Kennelly could lie about his age, anyone could, right? So what's the safest thing to do when you're stuck in such a dire situation? Yes, your son, I am to me. I need someone to come on over. 
He I am you. Just damn right. Just go ahead and blame the person who isn't around. Kennelly assumed that should be a good enough excuse to get himself out of the sticky situation. But was it? Once the cameras popped up, Kennelly decided to stay mum. There was no point talking back, and I'm glad he realized that. When it was finally time to leave, Briss had to remind him of something really important. I don't think any other idiot has been through this level of humiliation on this show. There was no need for the cops in this case. What happened back in the sting house should be a good enough lesson to never repeat such an offense again. But this is where things get weirder. Literally less than 24 hours later, Kennelly was caught in the same bait once again. At this point, I don't know whether I should feel bad for him or laugh my arse off. As for Chris, he was in disbelief. We've been through this before. What are you doing? This time around, Kennelly was charged with a two-year suspended prison sentence, three years of probation, and a lifetime registration as a offender. Phew, that must have served him right. I don't think he's ever going to attempt something like this again, but that's how normal people react. And there was nothing normal about this guy. Kennelly was once again the prime suspect in a case where he apparently flashed two young girls in public and ran into the woods. But if you thought that was weird, what happened in this next episode was even crazier. I gotta do something, I can't do that. <laughs> Oh For this entry, let's head over to the Bowling Green Kentucky Sting, where the team had landed a new catch named Lorne Armstrong. After moving from Cambridge, Maine to Nashville, Tennessee, right off the bat, Armstrong got busy. While most people would take time to familiarize themselves with a new neighborhood and settle down, Armstrong was into something else. The first thing he wanted to do was to reach out to all the fresh faces that he could meet and perhaps even date someday. The only problem being the age factor of his target group. The thing that sets Armstrong apart from the other men on this list is that Armstrong was very good at convincing people. This was a very dangerous skill, since Armstrong could talk anyone into anything. He was so manipulative that when he started his conversation with a girl who went by the screen name of Hayla Princess 94 and almost immediately started posing as the ideal guardian savior, he portrayed himself to be a man whom she could trust and even told her that if she didn't have any friends, he was glad to be one. He also backed up the statement by saying that he himself had two nieces whom he was very fond of and who doesn't like to be pampered. Armstrong went to great lengths to make sure that the girl felt comfortable with everything. He started off by discussing Kayla's relationships and educating her on the dangers of weird men online. This is quite hypocritical since Armstrong didn't consider himself as one. Just how narcissistic was this guy? Armstrong was surprised when he heard that the girl had a boyfriend, but the two of them hadn't done anything yet. Soon, Armstrong was head over heels for Kayla and specifically told her that he was in love with her innocence. I guess he was finally coming to the point. Armstrong continued to chat with Kayla and urged her to experiment with herself. Now this might sound like a lot, but just two hours into the conversation, Armstrong was desperately trying to get closer to the real deal. For the next two months, Armstrong played it slow and steady, taking his time to gain the girl's confidence. And finally, when the time was right, the man started to detail everything that he had planned to do with the girl. First up came the proposal. I wish I could marry you right now because I would do it. He clearly stated that if he had the chance, he would kidnap her and take her to his place in Nashville, where he would love her whether she liked it or not. And to assert his position further, he had the strangest way to address her. This man had some horrifying ideas. Finally, on his 37th birthday, Armstrong decided that it was time for him to drive down and meet Kayla, something he had been craving for over a month. He even brought Kayla a lovely present, a bracelet. After entering the house, Armstrong got comfortable on the massage chair. And and almost immediately started to woo the girl. I like it, I dyed it by I think, myself. I think it's pretty. Thank you. It's very pretty. But before things started getting touchy, Chris decided to storm right in. And in his possession were the chat logs that would soon reveal yet another shocking detail. Well, I'll tell you, for the last several days, you've been up to a lot. You're a pretty prolific chatter there. You see, Armstrong's chat log was so long that it spanned over 408 pages, something which ardent fans today dearly refer to as the Holy Lornography. And the extent of explicit content in those pages is beyond any normal person's imagination. Just as Chris was decoding the chat logs, Armstrong dropped a bomb that left Chris confused. Yeah, so Armstrong wanted us to believe that because he was taken for a ride in a previous relationship, it stemmed out of chatting online and the only way he thought of getting 
getting back was to do the same thing with someone else. Tit for tat. How cool is that? Well, not so cool anymore when you're sentenced to seven years in prison with additional probation and rehab classes, which he promptly failed to attend. Where's the weird part, though? Well, here it comes. After his release, Armstrong curiously started a YouTube channel, which he believed would skyrocket since his short-lived fame on the show. Talk about being an opportunist. He actually thought that his time on television gained him fame. This clown from Boston was once again arrested in 2019 for violating his parole and not having any sort of remorse towards his actions, even after spending a whopping five years in prison. Guess some people never learn. But this next man might be the most dangerous man to have ever been featured on the show. But guess what? He was also just as weird. How weird? This one will leave you in splits. I have walked from Pomona uh the man to have the honor of making it to this list is a man who had been charged with several cases spanning all the way from his childhood days. John Pierre Wary's life itself was a roller coaster that kept going up and down. Although he did fall in love a couple of times, he couldn't really settle down with anyone. I mean, how could he? This dude's entire life has been in and out of jail for offenses that even included individuals. When the team landed Wary while scouting for the next weirdo online, they had no idea what was in store. Wary had started a conversation with a bait named Luke who was set up by the Watchdog organization. At the time of the chats, the 48-year-old had started the conversation all the way from a public library under the email address imichaelwiltz at yahoo.com. Wary approached this account with absolutely no fear. Unlike other men on the show, Wary directly got into what he wanted even before trying to get to know the boy. This was concerning since this meant that Wary was either very impatient or he just didn't care. After a quick background check, the crew realized that they had to be extra careful since this man was no joke. Considering his history, this man was bound to be careful. And that's exactly what you can see in this next clip. Probably that's the cue to show up in his line of work, but it didn't work with the person he was here to meet. Since the team was prepared for his arrival, an actor posing to be Luke called out to Weary from behind a wall inside the house. <laughs> But here's the big twist. The actor was a woman who could closely mimic a younger person's voice. Quite impressive, but was it enough to get wary inside the house? It looks like it worked. Now take some time to get a good look at this guy, y'all. This guy looked like he was ready for a hike. What was he hiking though? Mount Everest? The man looked absolutely weary, but is that gonna deter him from his goal of approaching Luke? Yeah. Hey, we gotta fix right off. Wary was in a hurry. If not for Chris's intervention, he would have scooped up poor little Luke in no time. Let's pitch in a little background here. During his chats, Wary told Luke that he was a promotional photographer and was in town to film a hot movie. This is where things get weird. Wary claimed that he needed Luke's help in order to complete his work and even offered to feature him in his works. But there was a catch. Luke would have to succumb to a casting couch moment, not just with Wary, but also a few other men. When Chris started to question him, Wary was as calm as still walking. Water. And when he finally opened his mouth, he turned the entire story upside down. And who were you looking for? John Peterson. John? As the conversation pursued on, Wary started to get more and more convinced with his own story. One weird answer followed another, as Chris continued to grill the puffy old man. So you thought you were going to come to a job interview in this no. home at 11.28 at night? I was going to leave a note. So here we have a man who wants Chris to believe that he came all the way, halfway by bus, and the other half walking, just to meet a random guy he didn't even know, only because somebody else gave him his number, whose name he also doesn't know. And for what was he doing all this? Just to leave a small little note. If only people were as dedicated as this in real life. But no matter what, Wary did not budge from his extravagant lie. And so Chris decided to cut the crap and reveal his true idea. Identity. And this is where we usually see some sort of reaction from the weirdos. But Wary was some other creature. His stare was haunting. Once Weary left the house, he was rounded up by the cops, and once again, the story got twisted. The cop was bewildered, and his reaction is pretty legit. This weirdo had narrated a detailed and very intricate story, and after all that, who the hell is Scott now? Weirdos like this one never fail to surprise me, but who knows, maybe there are bigger morons out there. While most guys preferred to show their dominance, this one wanted to be submissive. 
And guess what? He even had a wide range of tools to fuel his fantasies. From leashes to collars to whips to blindfolds. God knows what else this weirdo had in mind, but he had no idea what he was walking into. Now, I don't know how many times you've seen something like this happen on the show, but this one is unique as hell. Chris was already busy grilling one of the weirdos when another decided to walk right in. Yep, that's exactly what happened. Call it miscommunication or whatever, but this sting turned out to be quite gripping. I mean, who the hell would expect this to happen? Why don't you come in over here and uh, stand right over here at the bar? How are you? Good. This has to be the show's first ever encounter with two weirdos at the same time. But look at these two jerks right here. Could you think of a more iconic duo than this? Bet you can't. As for Chris, he donned his boss mode on as he made the most legendary introductions you've ever seen. I want you guys to meet each other. This is Tennis Boy 213. And, and Tennis Boy, this is... Uh to mistresses, right? Well, Chris, take a bow, my man. That's one hell of an introduction right there. You could see Tennis Boy behave like he had no part to play in anything that was happening around him. While save two mistresses, yeah, I know how cheesy that sounds, but that's what Yazan preferred to go by. And this jerk was left perplexed. He was probably thinking, what the hell have I gotten myself into? Well, no idea. And who are these men chilling at the house? No idea again. Well, Yazan was the one who looked startled all this while, but Chris asked him next. Next, left Tennis Boy confused. Did you bring your collar with you? No. Wait, what? What's with the collar now? Well, allow me to give you an idea of what was behind this 26-year-old's filthy mind. To the world, Yazan was an ex-Jordanian basketball player who was currently a student and personal trainer. But to her, he wanted to be a dog. No, I am not kidding. And if you don't believe me, then take a look at this. We can't get too detailed, but we can say he prefers to be treated like a dog. He sends live video of himself naked. So you see how this weirdo preferred to be the submissive one during the act. He wanted to get all leashed up and expected her to do all the action. To make things clear, Yazan even shared a video of him wearing only the dog's collar. And I'm sure she got the message loud and clear. But Chris wasn't done yet. The TV presenter fired away questions like there was no tomorrow. But Yazan was facing an issue. You sent this? I can't you. You can't remember. That's you, though, right? You see what happened right there? I call it the great convenient memory loss. I mean, how fitting is that? To just forget everything you did or said just when you want to. But sadly for this prick, Chris had something solid to counter every claim that Yazan snubbed. Because out of nowhere, Chris pulled out this. Is that you in those pictures? So, who is that in those pictures, huh? Did the pictures help you juggle your memory for a bit now? I'm sure it did. Because this weirdo, all of a sudden, turned into this puny cat who looks so innocent and so ignorant and sweet. But it looks like it's now time to burst his bubble, because Chris was growing sick and tired of all the drama he was putting up. As for the other guy, he knew exactly what was about to happen. And so, Chris allowed Tennis Boy to do the honors and reveal what was in store for both of them. Although he started with a lot of hesitancy, Tennis Boy boy knew exactly what would happen next. Yeah, yeah well, we, we were both gonna get arrested, I think. Yep, well, the only leash you'll be tied to will be the one that'll take you to prison. And going by Yazan's crazy preferences, I don't think you would mind being cuffed, right? And just Tennis Boy said, Yazan had to submit himself and surrender as soon as he left the house. But not in the way he wanted to. On the ground, on the ground, on the ground. Later at the police station, Yazan made some shocking revelations. Apparently, he had never gone all the way with any woman before. But can you believe him? I think he's just cutting this innocent face just to escape jail time. But this next dude not only had a massive lack of judgment, but he was also absolutely paranoid. Why do I say that? Because this dummy was so determined that despite all the signs, he drove right back into the trap all by himself. So here's what happened. The man you're looking at is Kaiz Maju, and this dude might have been one of the luckiest weirdos to have ever escaped the scene, but only if he had better judgment. As soon as Kaiz entered the driveway, he caught on to something that most weirdos happen to miss. What? What's what? Oops, it looks like the crew screwed up big time. Someone had forgotten to turn down the radio's volume. And damn, it looks like this loser's gonna make a run. And that's exactly what Kai's did. He immediately packed up and drove away.
way. Seriously, if you ask me, I think this one dodged a bullet the first time, only to go around the block and drive right back into the trap just five minutes later. Phew, heights of desperation right there, don't you think? But this stinker had some really big plans for the day. And when I say big plans, I mean really big ones. Like this. I will show you heaven, he writes. I love it. I can do that all day. Oh yeah? You want to show heaven? Well, you're going to get heaven in just a bit. Kais believed he had some kind of superpower that would help him go all the way for the entire day. His chats were so graphic that I can't show them to you even if I want to. But you know what? He'd better save all that energy, because what's gonna happen next was going to truly test his stamina. This punk had no idea what he was in for, and despite all the suspicion, he still made a request. Give me a tour. <laughs> Give me a tour? Yeah. Um, let's see. Well, I'm sure he wasn't expecting a hot tub. Kai's seemed to be finally easing up a bit, and as the tour continued, but someone decided to sneak right in. Everything happened so quickly that Kai's barely had any time to react. One moment he saw the curtains move, and in the next, something unexpected happened. Now, Matt, I need to talk to you for a minute. Matt, why don't you have a seat right over there? The TV presenter was literally trying to catch up, but Kai's was already at the exit. While most losers are intercepted by the cops, and handcuffed before being driven off to the nearest interrogation station, something different happened in this case. Get him, let it stop it. Get him, cuff him. I think you get the idea what went down with this freak. Kaiz was hit by a jolt of at least 50,000 volts that sent him flying to the ground. Don't worry, it wasn't enough to send him to heaven, but it was enough to get him three years of probation with a lifetime registry and unsavory lists. But was this enough to teach him a lesson? Well, Kaiz did something horrible that landed him a 50 15-year sentence behind bars. This dude is currently one offense away from being sentenced to 25 years or life in prison. And I think that's enough time for him to take his fellow inmates to heaven. But take a look at this next weirdo. Here comes 53-year-old James Wiles. Nope, this is not a scene from the apocalyptic world of zombies. This is James Wiles, the 53-year-old man who is considered one of the most hated guys to have ever been caught on the show. Would you believe it if I said this guy who couldn't even walk in a straight line actually drove for two whole hours just to make it to the sting house? Well, that's exactly what he did. Talk about determination, huh? And before you start to sympathize with his physical condition, let me tell you that this loser had some of the most vile intentions sketched out inside his filthy head. So James was once a trucker in Jacksonville, Florida, and apparently he'd met with an accident that pretty much shattered his spine. Ideally, he should have been grateful to survive the accident and use the rest of his life to do some good. But sadly, James went on a totally different trajectory that scarred the lives of several others. There was nothing that could hold him back, which is why I'm glad the Watchdog organization caught on to him. It's crazy how despite his physical weakness, James seemed to be quite determined in having his way. Now, if you're an ardent follower of the show, there's no way you've missed the ham bubger memes. Yep, that's the same guy I'm talking about right here. This weirdo is known not only for his rather unique screen name, but also for his explicit chat. He first started the conversation like a madman who was insanely in love. Mind you, he was apparently crazy in love with someone he'd not even met. The living zombie also promised to be really gentle while he went on her. But that's not all. He had a very specific request to make. He wanted to see her in nothing but pink and Wow, that's some fantasy right there. And defying all odds, James kept his promise and showed up right on the dot. I wasn't sure if you were coming. Oh yeah. Sorry, I had to cut the clip right there because James started to stimulate himself just as he took a seat. This man was clearly sick in his head. I mean, that grin on his face gives away a lot more than it should, and his body language was screaming out to everyone around to be on high alert. Losers like this one could go to any extent to get what they want, and Chris had to actually cut his interview short because of this very reason. Can't take chances with maniacs, right? So when Chris revealed his true identity, the rest of the crew popped out to reveal themselves. But nobody was ready for one of the craziest things that James had to say about his condition. Now, mind you, this is the first time on the show that someone was saying something as hideous as this. I'm past that state now. So I'm telling you the truth. I am past that state. Wait a minute. Do you want me to believe that your little guy down there was dysfunctional? Then why even show up at the sting house? To flaunt your weakness? Well, I don't think so. But James continued to play pretend throughout the interrogation. However, nothing could save him from the clutches of the law and order. But this next guy had some really deranged ideas when it comes to making love. While James wanted to be as gentle as a 
cat. Yeah, he actually said that. This next loser wanted to do stuff with the cat. Ew! That sounds absolutely demented. But this guy proved that he needed the much hyped shock therapy that is used to treat lunatics. If not, who in their right mind would walk into a stranger's house looking like this? I'm walking into the living room. Emily, call out. Hey, just take a seat at the table. I'll be right there. Gosh, I still can't believe he actually did that. How desperate was he really? The man we're looking at is Marvin Locken, and I'm actually at a loss for words to describe him. I really wonder what he expected would happen. I mean, in a world where people are so insecure about their looks, I think we've got something to learn from this guy. He probably thought he was Aquaman, but there was someone who was ready to throw water on his face. You wanna explain yourself? Grab that towel right there, please. That's one hell of an entry right there, Chris. I mean, obviously Marvin was stunned to find Chris on the other side of the door. And considering the very compromised position he was found in, I hope he feels embarrassed for life. And of all the things he could tell in response to the reason he was at the sting house, this is what he had to say. Making a mistake. Making a mistake. You drive into somebody's driveway, walk into their house, well, I'm glad you realized that, you prick. But showing up at the house bare bottom was the least of Chris's worry. Because once you delve into the chat logs, you'll realize how whacked out this monster really was. Yes, that's exactly what he was. To top it off, this jerk actually admitted that something would have happened if Chris hadn't shown up to ruin all of his plans. He was pretty positive of going all the way, and he had absolutely no shame or remorse in admitting it. But what was the plan exactly? Chris had a very crucial question to ask in this context. What? What was your plan with the cat? I don't know. I was just being stupid with that. Look at the attitude of this guy. Some nerve you got right there, man. Like, are you for real? So what's with the cat and the whipped cream, you ask? This piece of junk wanted the girl to experiment with the cat and get some practice before trying out the same thing with him. And what's more, he wanted to watch all this unfold right before his eyes because that's the only way he could guide her and instruct her better. How thoughtful, right? And to top it off, he made more claims that I simply cannot believe. This is the first time which will never happen again. I can tell you that for now. I really can't understand what was so funny about it. And I don't even think it was his first time. Do you believe him? I for sure don't. Well, at this point, I don't even care if it's his first time or not. However, I do hope it's the last. This loser deserves the worst possible punishment ever. But this next weirdo made one of the lamest excuses I've ever heard on the show. He definitely wanted to give the relationship a name. But what he ended up saying was just plain wrong. I mean, just look at this guy. I don't think there was anything alarming about him. If you ask me, he looked like someone who was excited to just make it to the sting house. Nobody would have ever guessed that behind all that energy beaming out of this weirdo, there was something very sinister. The man you're looking at is Jerry Wayne, and this guy actually sparked off rumors of an unexplainable conspiracy. But let's cut to the moment he entered the house, and you'll soon understand why people couldn't stop gushing about him. In every other sting, we've always seen someone invite these morons into the house. But Jerry decided to not only invite himself in, but also do this. Yeah, you got a workout today. Say what? Say I had a nice little walk today. Yep, that's my very eager man who wanted to start a conversation even before checking if there was anyone at the house. I mean, why not? Just walk right in and start a conversation like you've been around forever. And if you were able to catch what he was saying, Jerry was talking about something on the lines of starting his workout sooner and how he headed out for a walk. That's when Chris interrupted him and asked him this. Where did you have to walk from? Oh, way, way, way. Well, I guess you simply cannot unsee what you saw now, can you? I mean, this moron had quite an unusual way to describe where he came from, and these few seconds were enough for him to become the butt of all jokes. People started talking as if Jerry was some kind of an extraterrestrial being. Like, this viewer believed Jerry hailed from a place which was possibly 700 God knows how many million light years away. Obviously, that was a PJ. But Chris actually acknowledging the place like it really existed made this segment that much more entertaining. But that was not the only reason people thought Jerry was unearthly. The more he spoke, the more alien he looked. And no, I'm not kidding, okay? Tell me you don't find this weird. Outside to say hi and meet a friend. Hi and meet a friend. Yeah, but I probably got the wrong address. 
the wrong address. Did you see that? I couldn't really take my eyes off them. Why does it look like his mouth was somehow disconnected from the rest of his face? One of the viewers even wondered if he was wearing someone else's face. But that isn't the most disturbing thing about him now, is it? Most morons usually try to explain their position by trying to convince Chris that they were some sort of mentor or educator or even protector. But this one's brains work differently. Of all the things he could say, Jerry said this. Yeah, big brother or not. Big brother. A a aspect, yes. Yeah, right. He just wanted to be a big brother who came to give some much needed brotherly advice. But you know what, Jerry? It's really hard for me to believe that when you were the one who shared some really explicit pictures online. What sort of a brother does that? It's just gross to even think about it. But these are the men that Chris hated on the show. And what this weirdo brought along will leave you in shock. You here? Okay, first up, here comes a 20-year-old student who was studying at the Salt Lake City Community College in Utah. Considering he featured on the show, you can take it for granted that this loser screwed his life up forever. Sebastian Rodriguez should have ideally been at college working on his assignments, but sadly, he had another project in mind. When Sebastian started chatting up with the girl, he wanted to make sure he came across as a very approachable person. He not only lied about his age, but also went under the alias Chris just to strike a better balance with the girl on the other side. It was only after the girl said that she was looking for someone older did Sebastian reveal his real age. When the loser arrived at the house, Sebastian welcomed himself in with great confidence. He started to look for the girl who could only be heard at the time. When he started to walk towards the direction of the voice, he- Wait a minute, who the hell is that lurking from behind? Was he part of the crew or perhaps a cameraman looking for a better shot? Neither. This dude had actually tagged along with Sebastian. Yes, this was Sebastian's partner in crime, David Mackick. And before either of them could scoot off, Chris decided to step in. Okay, come right over here, please. Right over there. Yeah. What we had here were two birds in a bush. And mind you, this was going to turn out to be a really thorny, prickly bush. Right from the get-go, Chris wasted no time to get down to business. While Sebastian looked like his soul had been flushed out of his body, David was barely phased by the situation. He was so much at ease that anyone could easily pass him off as one of the members of the crew. When Chris got down to questioning, he first confirmed Sebastian's credentials, and then he moved on to David, asked him his side of the story. And who are you? Oh, I'm just the tag along. Yeah, he's just my just the tag along. And what's, what's your name? David. Yep, washed his hands off right there, just like that. He actually sounded more like, don't get anywhere near my boss, I'm just the tag along. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Well, like, as if. Honestly, Chris isn't dumb to believe that. David did tag along, but he was obviously aware of what he was tagging along for. By this time, you can see both both the weirdos display different ways of exhibiting anxiety and restlessness. Sebastian was biting the hell off his nails, and David he had a rather peculiar way to handle stress by constantly sipping on his drink. At this point, Chris was intrigued. I mean, he's seen some really vile men, but this was just pissing him off. In order to get him to stop, Chris tried to bring the focus on David and asked him this. What are you drinking there? No beer. Uh, so it's just an energy drink then. Yeah. It looks like Mr. Tagalong is just going to stick to his drink for a little longer. Meanwhile, Sebastian started to beat around the bush. He first denied knowing the age of the girl, but when he found Chris holding up the transcripts in his hand, the weirdo gave up trying. As for David, he tried to shun down all the questions fired at him with just one reply. I'm just the Tagalong. Well, sure you are, but you did come, didn't you? However, David was in for a big shock as well. When Chris revealed the age of the girl Sebastian was here to meet, David's expression is thoroughly worth watching. Oh, she said. Yeah. Okay, there's no way anyone can fake a reaction like that. David was stunned. He was probably thinking, what the heck am I doing here? Yes, David knew exactly what he was here for. He was here to pitch in and have some fun for himself too, but he didn't know with whom. As for Sebastian, he had no idea how to react while his arse was being fired. Should I sit? Should I stand? Should I run away? Or should I just die? Sebastian's mind was bombarded with several things that could happen with him. And finally, he mustered up the courage to ask Chris this. Am I in trouble, sir? 
And the silence? That's one hell of a class act right there, Chris. For someone who's going through a panic attack, Chris only made it worse for Sebastian by giving him the silent treatment. You have to agree that it's quite tormenting to just think about the different possibilities of what might happen as opposed to straight up being informed of the consequences. And that's exactly what was eating Sebastian up from the inside. While Chris continued to thrill him and brought up the issue of the drinks and of course the pack of protection he'd brought along for what was to be a fun night, David in the background was enjoying the show. Considering how much David was bothered about Sebastian getting caught in the act, I wonder what kind of relationship these guys shared because this dude simply didn't care. And I'm guessing Chris too had the same question to which Sebastian said this. Come you brought your tag along? Because I just brought him because I wasn't going to do anything, sir. I just wanted him to come with me. Well, they definitely are not friends. That much I know. Did they just meet or something? One of the viewers commented saying Sebastian probably couldn't get the hard drinks by himself and so asked David to help him out since he was older. Either way, since David was here, he was bound to be answerable in the eyes of the law. But that's not what happens. And if not, you're obviously free to go. Great. Thanks a lot, sir. I'm just just a tag <laughs> When Chris asked them to leave, the relief that washed over Sebastian's face was palpable. It was like a new lease of breath was filled into his life all over again. But that relief would only last till he reached the exit, as there was someone waiting to get a good hold of him. As for the tag, he was happy that the ordeal was finally over. And so was his drink. Well, you can poke all the fun you want at this guy, but this is what pissed Chris to the core. He was mad that Sebastian got someone he hardly knew along with him to meet a girl who was really young. He not only got someone, but also got enough drinks and protection for both of them. But this is what makes the sting even crazier. David might be the only guy on the show who showed up at the sting and left without getting involved in any sort of investigation. Thereafter, Sebastian was moved to the nearest police headquarters where he was booked and sentenced to 36 months in prison. And David, he moved on in life got married, and had a bunch of kids. Do you think letting David go was a mistake? Just think of it this way. What if Chris wasn't there at the house that day? What do you think these two guys would have been up to? Would David have still continued to be a tag? Or would he have joined Sebastian in going all the way? I guess we'll never know. But here comes another weirdo. And this one right here was so disgusting that Chris simply lost it when he read the transcripts. Uh, yeah, father, son. Yeah. Father, son? Yes. So this is the grandpa you don't want in your life because this old man right here is actually the next weirdo on our list for today. Charles Harding, or simply Chuck, was all of 65 years old, but for some reason, he did not act his age. Chuck's chat with the boy he was in contact with online from the team might go down as one of the most disgusting chats to have ever been exchanged in the history of the show. When Chuck got in touch with the boy somewhere down the line, he got so engrossed in his dirty thoughts that he could not help himself but get all the demographics of the boy's body. The worst of the chat is still to come, but let me quickly show you a glimpse of what happened when Chuck made it to the sting house. Hey, how are you? Okay. Why don't you have a seat right around that stool there for me? Aw, it looks like the poor old grandpa's age finally got to him. I mean, just take a look at his reaction. Chuck was startled. He was expecting a puny little boy, but here comes a tall six-foot gentleman all suited up from head to toe. So how do you get out of a sticky situation like this? Just lie the hell out of it till you get out. And that's exactly what Chuck decided to do. Would it work in his favor? Talk to him, uh, possibly. I know, this weirdo couldn't even talk properly. He was barely able to even voice his thoughts. And yet, here he was trying to pull off an entirely different performance for the day. You'd think he had it in him to pull it off. Anyway, if you couldn't make out a thing of what he said, let me help you out. So apparently, there was this gentleman who called Chuck over because Chuck was selling a house. Wow, I have to give it to him. This was quite the storyteller. And mind you, his story is full of twists and turns. This man sure had a way with his words. But will it help him out of this mess he's in? When Chris started to read from the chats, good old Chuck could not believe what was happening. But did he know it? Nope. The man sat so still that it was hard to read his face. And when he finally opened his mouth, out came another hideous lie. Well, I have another person that uses my computer. Another person. Yep, why not? I mean, anyone could use your computer. Totally get it. But why is it that you are the one who showed up at the sting house? When Chris continued to read the transcript, you can see how poetic Chuck really was. When the boy asked him if he was rich, this is how he replied. No, son. Rich only in love I have and the care for you. 
Wow, precious words. But what kind of care, really? The man wanted to do everything right, from sizing up stuff to feeling it and caressing it till it ran dry. But what this weirdo reveals next made Chris lose his head. Military travel agency for five years, and then I was a government employee with the Navy. Yep, this man had worked not only for the Air Force, but also for the church in the past. And after all that, this is what he was doing? When nothing else worked, he finally admitted that he was the one who had chatted up with the boy. And well, the boy was in a gay chat room. So what was wrong with a little harmless chat? Again, just like he did earlier, he conveniently forgot about the boy's age. Well, I didn't really expect anything better from him anyway, but it's scary how many people this man would have come across in his whole life and the kind of things he would have done with them. I bet this wasn't his first rodeo. All we have to do is just scan his browsing history, and I'm not going to be surprised if I find a ton of other illicit chats in there. But Chris had a more pressing question to ask. Do you know that it's illegal to send obscene material? You can see how Chris was minutes away from punching this loser's face. What this weirdo was here to do could have left an innocent person scarred for life. But apparently, this Gramps would have bailed out if the boy met the following criteria. If, you know, I felt uncomfortable and I felt that he was, you know, not... Just forget about everything, okay? The very fact that the boy was simply not old enough should have been enough reason for Chuck to say his goodbyes. Chris definitely gave him a good earful. And in one of his podcasts, he even mentioned that just having Chuck around literally disgusted him. This man is clearly rotting in hell right now. But this next weirdo was bowled over the moment he stepped inside the house. Wondering why? The reason behind his reaction is shocking. Come here and have a seat. No, no, no. I knew that. You know what? I know. Sit down, please. Okay. Keith Williams was beaming with confidence when he walked up the driveway and invited himself inside the sting house. But everything changed the moment he saw Chris. Of course, finding another grown man in the house as opposed to the person they had been talking to is upsetting. But Keith's reasons were different. Can I give an interview? You're not going to give an interview. Keith actually refused to give an interview, which means he clearly knew Chris was here for one. Well, that's only because this wasn't Keith's first time. It was just another house, another setup, but the same old weirdo caught in the same old trap. You know how the crew lines up one weirdo after another at the same sting house, right? Well, that's sadly how many there are out in the streets. So Keith showed up a little too early, and he actually drove past another loser getting arrested right in front of the house. He actually saw the entire climax of the sting happening live in front of his eyes. But despite that, Keith wanted to take his chances. When he called the girl for a quick update on what was happening, he was told that it was some random thing that the cops had latched onto. So he waited for the cops to leave, and then circled right back into getting himself arrested. Talk about being desperate. But this is the reason Keith went through all the trouble. Bored. Honestly, look at my eyes. I just, you know. What on earth? Bored? How can you even be this bored in life? Really? Have you got nothing else to do? Heard of anything called friends? Hobbies? Just chilling out, maybe? No. Imagine if every bored person on the face of the earth shows up at random places like this. What do you make of a world like that? The sooner we pack such idiots away, the better. Because having them around is just no good. But this weirdo tried his best to talk himself out of the mess he was in. Anyway, I'll get rid of it and I'll never touch a thing again. I'll go to meetings, whatever you need me to do. Talk about being guilty. But what he did was to make Chris's job easier. Keith had just spilled the beans even before Chris got a chance to grill him. But when Chris held his ground and continued to read the horrendous transcripts, the weirdo had the craziest reaction I've ever seen. Yeah. I'm wrong. Do you understand? I'm telling you I'm wrong. This man is definitely getting on my nerves right now. And nope, not one small hint of guilt on his face. And when Chris brought up his past encounter in a similar episode from the crew's online history, this clown had only one thing to say. Get me inside your mind. What's going on? Just bored. I'm single. I'm bored. To hell with your boredom, man. What kind of boredom is this? I mean, get a life, bro. Okay, one last try. Now the cameras are out, and Chris has also revealed his identity. But let's see if our man here will finally own his shit or not. I drove by this house and saw police out front. Yeah. Yet you walked in here anyway. Bored. I could told you. To hell with your boredom. Okay, let's just get rid of this bored soul and move on to this next weirdo who brought something so unexpected with him that for the first 
first time ever, the crew had no idea what to do. Oh no, he brought his son with him. He brought his son with him. He's got his child with him. Yep, that's right. Clifford Wallach literally brought his kid along with him. This is not a play date for kids, buddy. Get that loud and clear inside your filthy head. How can a father even think of bringing his own child to commit such an offense? Apparently, he brought him along only because there was no one else to take care of him. Well, he could easily set another date with his online partner, or maybe even drop the kid off at a relative's. Or how about just giving up the whole idea, huh? No, that sounds more like it. I can't get over the trauma the kid must be experiencing right now. I will never be able to come to terms with this particular episode. And it's not just me. Everyone involved on that particular day was in for a shock they ever asked for. Just take a look at how ever so casually he's walking right inside the sting house with this kid. What was the kid supposed to be doing while this man was at his game, huh? The crew had no idea what to expect from a man who would stoop as low as this maniac, and it goes without saying that Chris didn't want to waste any time either. There is no way this could play out like any other regular bust on the show. The crew had to be very careful with this one. They wanted to make sure that the man knew he was in trouble, but at the same time, not alarm the child in any way. My point is, because your child is here, I think it'd be best if you just went ahead and left. Chris got straight to business, and this is one sting he will never be proud of. The TV presenter was very brief with the confrontation and let him go almost immediately. Now, this was going to be a very different kind of arrest. Sadly, the kid, no matter how much they tried, had to witness the arrest of his father. And all Clifford could think about at the time was this. Get arrested. Please give me my son, please. If you were so bothered about your child, you would never do something as disgusting as what brought you to the sting house. You were not bothered about your kid, so stop putting up a show. In a podcast, Chris later shared this rather unusual experience and said that he despised Clifford for bringing the boy along. I'm sure the boy was old enough to understand what was happening, but one thing is for sure. Since this arrest was meant to go public, I hope the boy wasn't affected with the extent of humiliation on TV. So these were the weirdos Chris hated on this show, but who knows? There may be more weirdos out there who might show up with weirder things in the future.